Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whitehead. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent. that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show fuck i thought i would be good you're not yet the clap no i just got one one little, one little guy. One little just, tiny just, one. Yeah, it, it's not as bad as last week. I've been. Um, it's actually kind of weird. I it was don't like know. raw meat last week. Yeah. For yeah, the uh, healing tears is weird. I don't know really the best. I've been putting like neosporin. Usually, I just leave them alone. That's what I usually. But do. I. But you, then the the problem with a tear is when your tear tears. Okay. You get the tear, yeah. so you get a tear, but then like the creases in your hands. Yep. When you get that line open up, those mm-hmm. mother, those are the fuckers that take like two or three weeks. Yeah, because they keep opening and back up. Yeah, and this is um. So I've been putting like neosporin and band aids and things like that. When I and I bought band aids from Seven Eleven, and I was just like, yeah, can I get <laughs> three cans ones. of Copenhagen and and, some and I said I said I put the band aids up. I was like, and I'll take these band aids because that's just the kind of fucking man I am. <laughs> that's how I talk to strangers, and she laughed. You know, she I was. You yeah, were funny. I always like uh, making people laugh that uh, don't know me. Um, anyways, hi. Hi. Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. This is episode 31-ish, 32, something yep. like that. I think it's 31. Yeah, I didn't do too much homework. I actually, I had a long workout this morning. Yeah? Yeah. You, um, you training again for something or are you just you just maintaining? Uh, TB, I was actually talking to my coach about that this morning. Actually, okay. so yeah, we. I was I was talking to my coach this morning and I was, I was, um, I was telling him, I was like, man, I, I, I figured something out. So like the plan was like, so last week I took off like right. last week, I, I got really addicted to pizza for a little bit there. Ooh, I, the pizza three nights in a row. Nice. And ice cream and well cookies earned and chips too. And I might like say, but, okay, but here important. Have you had a DiGiorno croissant crust pizza? <laughs> Fuck dude. No, it's, it's the, I dude, it's the best. I mean, Stacy had one a couple Buttery, months ago flaky crust. and I was like, that seems interesting. And we, uh, I was going to have one fat day after right. the competition. So I don't know, like, you know, I, I wrote about it in my philosophy. Like I only have a couple fat days yep. a year. I don't have cheat days yep. or something like that. When I go, I go, you know, and I just had a really disappointing fat day. Like the pizza I got didn't hit the spot. Yeah. And, uh, and I just, um, you know, one led to two, two led to three, three led to four. And I was actually, I asked my coach, I was by Wednesday, I, I text my coach. I was like, hey man, are we cool if I just like, <laughs> are we cool? <laughs> just go all week if I want to just being disgusting. I made it by Friday. I had stopped. Yeah. So I started snacking on Monday by Friday. I was like, I've, I'm at my limit. I feel awful. I feel disgusting. Yeah. And I was thinking about it too, you know, like, so my fat day is a, a, how a lot of people just exist. Oh yeah. And it's like, man, no, you know, and I wasn't taking my vitamins. I wasn't drinking my greens. Fuck the world. And, and so it's just like, you know, <laughs> and, my, and you just feel different, you know, when you're, when you're conscious of when you're like conscious or subconscious of the way your stomach feels because yeah. you have shit in it, yep. it just makes you feel different. Yeah. You know, it's hard to be aggressive. Right. It's hard to have like a positive, aggressive mindset yeah, it affects when everything. you're bogged down by shit. Yep. And I was you know, so I'd have those initial thoughts like, oh, I feel like shit, but like, it's okay. I'm just doing this for a little while and then I'll go back to, you know, my regularly s- scheduled programming. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just like, man, no wonder people are fucking un- unhappy. So you made it four or, days. Four days, yeah. Which is long for me, dude. It like, is. that's, and I, you know, that, but I went through, when I went through COVID when I was sick, th- that's when I usually crave salty shit food. And yeah. just, where when you're sick, you eat snacks. But was I it? didn't eat any fucking junk food when I was sick, not one bite. So I was making up for that a little bit. You right. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was well, like, well earned, man. Yeah. Yeah, you, it was. Yeah. You worked hard. Yeah. And then so it was like, okay, so I was, you know, chatting with Stacy, chatting with my coach. It's like, what's our next move? Because usually, so this was what I was, 
we were going to take it casually. It was just, you know, it was just like have an off season where it's like I care, but not too much. Right. And then maybe pick up trying hard like December 1st. We have a fun, and, fun competition coming up, right? Yeah. But like, you, like, like yeah, but like fun, we're going to try hard and we're right. going to try to win, you know? And it's like, um, I'm, I'm not going to train right now for that. My body certainly needs a break, but usually mentally, um, after a big, you, you know, like the competition didn't wipe me out. It was, it was the lead up to the competition. Oh yeah. Like that's like fucking, you can't do that all the time. Right. It's too much stress, too much thinking, too much um, intensity. Right. You know, but um, so usually after after things like that, I'll like last time I, I won Rush Club, I took four months and all I did was drink and play music, <laughs> painted my fingernails, got the crayons out. Did I you just, get sad I too? Just really, well, like, yeah, like yeah. I let myself get sad. I let, my, <laughs> like, I let yeah. myself get emo. Like, and sometimes I feel like I need to scratch that itch, uh-huh. you know, and so that's what I was going to do for a while i was gonna i was gonna like you know i was like okay like i'm gonna drink i'm gonna paint i'm gonna play the piano play the guitar listen to emo music let myself feel those feelings and stuff and so and then uh yesterday i started listening to like the the emo music that i like and my brain was kind of thinking those things and dude i get i can be like really flamboyant (laughs) there's just a part of me that can be really eccentric like feather feathered boas yeah, and stuff yeah, it, well like or just you know uh opposite of pre-competition okay derek you know yeah um and i was just and i was i was like man i don't i don't even want to go here right i usually i used to enjoy it so much uh, that mentality who's your friend who's your friend uh Jake Nodar. Yes. Yeah. Jake. Nodar. So that's exactly yeah. what I picture when you yeah. say I'm, there's a flamboyant side of me. I'm picturing Shetland pony, Dude, some like, fucking rainbow there's, stuff. There's some Derek's inside that are fucking interesting. <laughs> His shit's so funny. Really interesting. Um, and, and I, and I think it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's good for my health, my mental health yeah. to express myself, express in, yourself in a different way. But I was, but I was like, man, you know what? I, um, and I've said this before, it's like, I always have to be careful on which it's that old adage, like the wolf you feed, right? you know? Oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, you know, and we've talked about that on like show podcasts we've done about depression and things yep. like that. Like I can open that door and hang out in that room and I really enjoy it, but is it good for me? Right. You know, but I, but I do it control, but I don't even want to fucking play in there now. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, I like, I can go inside but I don't even want to play in there just because I don't have, it's not what I truly want. Right. And I figured that out. I was like, so what do I want? I was like, man, I, I want to stay focused. I want to stay competitive. Mm -hmm. And, but, but like I have to take an off season, but I can. So I was telling my coach today, I was like, that doesn't mean I want to work out hard. I can't, you can't go a hundred percent all the time. No, you you beat your body down. But it, I said, the difference will be like how I think, what I do outside of the gym, what music I listen to, and things like that, you know? So I was, so yeah, I just fucking, this is, I'm just back on the saddle right cool. away, you know? That's cool, man. Like, and I feel good about, you know, yeah. I was like, or it's like, I was kind of teetering on it a little bit, but like saying it out loud. And maybe that's just, you know, and Stacy's, Stacy seems to have been quite on board. They're just like, that's just Derek. That's the cool thing about saying stuff out loud is you get the, the, the feedback from people around you of like when you make a decision to do something, I've, I don't keep anything in. I vocalize everything just so that way when I hear like Talia's feedback to it, I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm rolling with that. But usually, I mean, the way I am in training has been something different mm-hmm. for Stacy. It's, it's not her lifestyle. Right. But now she's, she's, she said quite often lately, she's like, Oh, that's, that's Derek. Derek's always training. Like even when Derek's not training, he's training. Right. He can't not do that, you know? And I was like, you know what? Fuck. If we're just going to accept it around here, I'm going to go for it. Like this is, this is my best life. Like, or I enjoy it. You know, I could do a lot of other things, but this seems to be like a a really deep desire of mine to always do well. So it's just, I mean, like I, I still have to, um, Take it easy and work out. I have to get healthy. Yeah, like my first goal is get healthy. It's like yeah, because you still got a little leftover from residual COVID. Yeah, and then I got dude, I got a shoulder injury, man, like a legit shoulder injury, which is so funny. 
You know how it happened? No. Slept on it wrong. <laughs> Two weeks ago. It was actually it was actually the Monday before the competition. Yeah. So I it, it was Sunday night. Okay. And I know it was sleep because I didn't work out Saturday or Sunday and I felt great. Right. And I woke up Monday morning and that that Monday before competition, that's your peak week. That's when you should that's when you should feel great. Mm-hmm. And all you're doing is is recovering. And I woke up and I was like, fuck. And it and it's in a two weeks later, I was like, This is a real injury. Right. And I got from sleeping. you know, heart, you know heart advanced sleeping. Yeah. And uh um that's a that's another you know, I was like, I am going on thirty five here. That's, just, I'm, this that's is about rolling through my head. Yeah, I'm just like, that's, like that's age, just, bro. That's just the age thing. Like yeah. uh, like or like that's a level you've achieved. Like when you <laughs> when injure, you unlock that yourself, level. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. The sliding door is gonna right. kick your ass now. You know, dude, and it's funny. So the last um the last few days at the gym, everybody thinks I'm in my late twenties. Okay, but real, like everybody thinks I don't. Maybe it's because of, I, I think I think it's because of what I'm still able to do. How loud you physically? are physically? Well, like that too. <laughs> Lot, like talk, like little flamboyant sometimes. <laughs> you know, fucking talking about dicks. But like I still move well and right. I train hard and I and I and I you know uh, I put out. Yeah. You know, and, and she fucks. Yeah. But everybody, <laughs> nobody really thinks, and I don't think I'm 35, but people seem to not guess that I'm 35. And this is one of the, you know, and it's, um, and when they find out it's, it's always, and we talked about this. I can't remember if it was a podcast or just the two of us, but like when people tell, tell, talk to me about my expiration date. Oh yeah. Fucking it drives me insane, yeah. man. And like today I was talking to a guy at the gym. He's a cool guy. And you know, he was, he, he's like, what are you like? 27, 28. I wish. And I was like, bro, I'm fucking hitting 35 here soon. And he's like, Oh, he's like, and he said something, but then he was like, you can't do this forever. And I, and I just, I'm just like, fuck you. Fucking people need to stop saying that shit to me. I can do this forever because like, I will always do what I'm able to do. Right. Like, it, like my existence now, I'm missing a leg. I can't do the things I was doing when I had two legs. Right. And when I'm 20 years older, I won't be able to do what I could do today, but I'll be able to do something at a high level for that place in my life. It drives me fucking insane. Yeah. And really, all they're doing is projecting their shit onto you because they quit about 30, 31, 32, right. You know, and they've been quitting for 15, 20 years and that's, and they've, that's their, that's their reality. So they push that shit on me. Like, it comes across too as, as a, as like an on off switch instead of something that's relative to the fitness that you are when you're 60. Yeah. Right? Like there's I know, still like, 60 year olds. Like my uncle's friend Ironman. who came here, 72 yeah. years old, Gus. Fuck yeah. And he was like, he was like, I'm pretty sure I can still do a strict ring muscle up. And he, like, Fuck, dude. And I was like, and I was, I was scared to watch him try, but <laughs> age has nothing to fucking do with anything. Right. Like, yeah, you're not going to be as good, oh. but you know what the funny thing is, man, I'm, I'm still only getting better. Right. You know, like physically, because I care more about recovery and things mm-hmm. like that. And I don't, I don't ever want to push too much recovery shit on people in their early twenties. Cause it doesn't, you're good. You right. know, like just fucking that day will come for you. Yep. When you know, and you'll know because it'll be a, an injury yeah, from sleeping. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, now most of my my workouts are my workouts. That's the easy part, right? You know, the hard part is the recovery. And but if Which you takes if, longer, if you take it seriously, and actually, so we can talk about this. Look what I got. Is that a fucking Fitbit? It's a Whoop. A Whoop. What a is whoop. that? Yeah. What's it measure? So. So I got a whoop and, and, and you've known me long enough to know that this is a big deal. Yeah. It's like fucking technology. <laughs> technology. I could, dude, I was getting frustrated. Like yesterday was day one <laughs> and I couldn't get the strap on and I didn't know how to sync it. And I was like, fuck this shit. Fucking- I was like, Stacy, I'm, I'm sending it to my friend. My, I was going to give it to my coach and Stacy's like texting my coach and they're both like, you need to keep that fucking thing on and things like that. But this, so here, here's my, um. This thing measured, this is a whoop and it was like $300 mm-hmm. and it's a monthly subscription. I had one of these before it was this, I had one of the, tell, talk about what it is. Yeah. So, you know, um, it's a, it's it, for those of you who can't see, it's a little wristband thing 
and it monitors like your heart rate, but it's supposed to track your recovery. Okay. It, 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 it tracks your sleep. It's like the, your, your HRV heart rate variability measures your heartbeats, natural irregularities increases in HRV can indicate that your body is primed for physical exertion. So it measures your HRV, your resting heart rate, your respiratory rate, and then it gives you a recovery percentage. Okay. And then, so, I mean, I'm in my first few days. It needs like four to, days to a week to get yeah. like your real fucking numbers, you know? But then it'll, so like here, right here, it says, um, last night, how long did I sleep? Six hours of sleep. The, and it calculates the sleep you need to recover from your day. Oh, but wow. I physically can't sleep eight hours. No. Maybe like once a month. Like on a Sunday or something yeah. like that, you know, but they say, so I, I achieved 84% recovery and they say over 70% is good. Now I have never believed I'm doing this just because I think it'd be fun to see what my natural life is. Yeah, dude. You it's, know, it's like it's data, like, like same. Yeah. So like with, I counted the macros <clears throat> the one time to do my food philosophy. Yeah. And what did I do? Like, so I counted my macros and I sent them off to my dietitian friends i was like what do you what do you what do you think of these numbers and they're like that's spot on it was like legit you know so i want to see if i'm doing if i do well i know shit or but if and if i need to make adjustments yeah. or something like that but um look at you so sifting through the right, data right. Mm -hmm. but i still caution against this for somebody who isn't um as i, I don't i don't want to sound like a cunt when I say this, but like, you know, the level that I'm at right. now, it's like, maybe I can take a look at this because right. I don't, I don't believe in work basing your life off of the numbers. Okay. You know, they can sort of be like a guiding thing, but so many people yeah. are a slave to their no fucking Apple watch heart rate, their heart rate monitors, things like that. And I was, and, um, it's a guide. Yeah. And, and so it, it tells me how many calories I burned already today. And, and it's Okay. So it does do cal caloric 15, burn. 1592. And that's one workout. Yeah. And it, it, so it's, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. I've burned almost 1600 calories and I didn't have my normal morning. Yeah. So that makes sense that I need 5,000 calories. When people, when I broke down my macros, I eat 5,000 calories a day. Yep. And people are like, what the fuck? I eat 5,000 calories a day when I'm losing fat. Mm-hmm. And they're like, how the fuck do you do that? Because you're, you're burning. I, it'll be fun to see yeah. what I burn, just for fun's yep. sake, you know? And that's that's what I think this should be, like fun. Do yep. not let numbers and shit guide your life. Right. Or like, but, th th that's, like ballpark that, that's, math. That's it's not fuzzy the end math. all be all. And I think sometimes these things make people weaker. They make people weak. Well, people look at that and say, that is the end all be all. Instead of saying, there's margin of error and this is a, a guide yeah. for, for how to kind of look at how I my think day this went. is cool for like an, an elite athlete to go. You always have to go a step further because like I, everything like, at the, so I, I just competed. I did, I did really well, but now if I want to do better, I have to do better some somewhere yeah like add new things add new tricks because like I, I i did physically and mentally i did as good as i could you know right. it's just now it's just we're fine tuning yep and i was actually um um at lvac at my bro gym they opened up a new like functional fitness area okay um is that where the little ladder thing that you were doing the other day yeah. Lightning fast. <laughs> yeah. Fucking lightning fast. Very impressive. <laughs> Dude, rooms like that, I'm going to have some fun in there. Like, oh my gosh, when we move to St. Louis and I, I'm working out in the first form gym, yeah. uh, like the gym is going to be my playground again. <laughs> That's like, dude, in, in 2014, 2015, when I started doing things on the internet, I was yep. at a gym and it was just my playground and right. I had free reign. You can't do videos at LVAC. No. And it's, you have to respect the equipment and things like that. But like in St. Louis, oh my, the gym is going to be my playground. It's going to be on. like Derek Unchained. Right. Like now I can be, because I'm not really goofy or anything like that anymore, but goofy happens on a whim. Right. Usually and, when you're arm I, wrestling. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes it comes mm -hmm. out when I'm arm wrestling. Yeah. But anyways, this guy who runs that uh, room, he, um, life. are you familiar with Lifetime Fitness? Oh yeah. Yeah. They have a thing. And I don't know anything about them anymore. 
They have um, a bar. I'll tell you that. They have a bar at yeah. the gym. But they have this like training thing called like alpha training or something like that. So it's like their version okay. of functional fitness. Anyways, he ran that for a gym in uh, Atlanta. And now he's doing it here at LVAC. And I was he's he's smart. He's, he was a college, he played football in college, and he's got a couple fucking degrees and things like that. And we were chatting this morning about the whoop and just like heart rate monitors in general. And yep. I've never really met, I, I, I don't think I've met somebody with like his credentials that agreed with me that these things make people weak. Okay. They make people weak. Yeah. Because, and I was, and it was cool to chat with him because I think more importantly than this monitor and these numbers is getting in touch with with your body right it's the same thing about like my food philosophy mm -hmm. you know when it's like i don't want to give people a diet i want you to take the time to learn how you respond to food right like what food you like what food helps you how do you feel after you eat it yeah you know and like my my thing with like heart rate monitors people are like oh i'm trying to get my target heart rate 146 no higher I'm like and i'm coming from the army it's like hey man you're in a you got a, you're in a firefight if your fucking heart rate is way above the optimal zone, what the fuck are you going to do? Like right. call a timeout on the war? Hold There's on. no fucking timeouts in, in a fire. That, so that's that's always been my like fitness mentality. It's like, you know, like be smart. Yep. But when you got to fucking go, go and don't care about this like dumb, don't care about the dumb shit. Right. Listen to your, listen to your inner voice. But, um, but you know, I'm going to. I'm going to give this uh, I don't understand what a lot of these numbers. That's why Stacy and my coach are making fun of me because they're like, what does this say? I'm like, you know what? There's a lot of numbers and I, I, I got to find out what they mean. And I was telling <laughs> the guy today that that coach at the gym, I was telling him, I was like, man, I've been working out since I was 17. And uh, like fitness has been a huge passion of mine since then for right. 17 years. And it's amazing how little I know about oh, yeah. the science, the of science it. of yeah. it. I don't think that, but I think that's like, but that, well, the that doesn't is, not make me a professional. The like the, 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 the science is the details, right? The, the best, the, and the one thing I can help people with is like their desire mm -hmm. and their grit, like their mental tenacity. That's if you have the mental tenacity, you can do anything. Yeah. But most people try to like, fuddle their way through this without any fucking tenacity right and that's like but and that's the only thing you need yep the only thing you need is a fucking desire to do better like a and you know like like we said like embrace the suck type yep. of stuff you know like you got to really love it yep. if you don't like you're fucking you're not cut out for this shit and i i think everybody does i think everybody has a voice i that think so says yeah how are you doing, by the way? I haven't, with your running and things like that. Uh, the last few days have been, I have Dude, not we've had a lot. fucking toxic air the here. Smoke. You can't go outside. No. The California, I got a funny, you want to see a funny meme real quick? Yeah. Look at this. I don't know if you saw this today, but. <laughs> it's a fucking boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So, like, last week, this, this last week uh, has been shitty. The last two days, I haven't even gone out. Just yeah. because I woke up and I looked at, we have a mountain, like yeah. maybe a mile and a half behind my well, house. Well, Stacy's shows a website that says how the, the air, quality, like yesterday was in a hazardous yeah. zone. I'm just know? like, I'm not going to go run and make myself breathe yeah. heavier in that shit. Thanks, California. You motherfuckers. Yeah. So, um, you know what I did last night? What's that? I went running shoe shopping. Oh. Well, you were doing some leg shit. I yesterday. got a run, yeah. So I got a makeshift running leg put together. So, okay. dude, like I've always wanted to get back into running. Yeah, but it's it's you know I I, I sort of um in like twenty from twenty twelve to twenty fourteen, I was trying all sorts of different legs and things yeah. to try to get a running leg to work. My problem, I have a blade. People okay. think I just don't have a blade or like, right. it, but like w when it comes to prosthetics, the bottom part is the easiest part. Okay. It's the socket that yeah. is the socket is the problem, you know? And so like Derek Carver removed that problem by getting the osteoprosthesis surgery. Yeah. You know, so it's the That's socket. And so shit. like with me, my, you know, when I work out my stump sweats and it loses volume. 
Okay. So it shrinks. And yep. so my socket falls off. And yep. so for running, I couldn't get a socket that stayed on. And um, I just got annoyed. I just, I think I just took a break. I was mm-hmm. like, I'll let some technology catch up. But I think it was mostly like, I loved the team that I worked with up in Minnesota. Yeah. But I don't think they were really delivering. That's, I mean, there's not much in their defense, there's not much room for error when you're a prosthetist making sockets. Like it's right. either perfect or it's shit. You know, okay. and it's hard to do things perfect. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm, I got that competition at the end of the month here. So what were they working on? So you already have the blade, and so they're working on a different kind of socket, or back then, yeah. So there's there's different kinds of sockets, you know. So what I have is called a suction suspension, okay, system, and it's just straight like a one way valve. Yep. And I have those rings on my liner that yep. creates a seal. Yep. But there's um, and it comes up all the way. I I have a. It's like your butt cheek. My ish, it's called the ischial seat. Okay. Like that bone yeah. right where your butt is. It's called the ischial seat. So I have on my socket, my ischial seat rests, rests on that. Okay. And it, and it provides stability. But there's there's sockets that are called sub-ischial. So they don't come down or they, they don't come up as high. Uh-huh. I think Marcus actually has. He's got a, like a, it's called a hi-fi sub-ischial socket. Um, but the sub-ischial, that'd be good if I want to ride bicycles someday. To come, for it to come down lower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But so we tried a sub issue. I didn't like the lack of stability. Yep. So if you like the benefits of sitting on that issue bone is um, stability, right? Because otherwise you're just sort of using atrophied glutes and hips to control the leg. Okay. And I use like a vacuum system. Right. So that, <laughs> but that, that sucked because that liner was dumb. The, it was like a weird liner. And then the vacuum the idea behind that, so as your stump shrinks and loses volume, it sucks the air out and keeps the seal intact. But it's like uh, it's big and wonky, yeah, and just super high maintenance, you know. So it's not worth the fucking trouble, right? Um, and then there's there's uh, sockets that have what's called like a boa, and okay. it's like a turn dial, and it just there's there's you take like my socket, you cut a square out in the back, and then you put like some strings. And then oh, you can okay. tighten it so yeah. it comes in a little Kinda bit. Kind of like how those high-speed uh, hiking shoes do where yeah. you, mm-hmm. the, they don't have yeah. laces. They right. have that you just thing. tighten it. Yeah. yeah. But even those, so like at the end of the day, there's all this fancy, sh- here's the thing about prosthetics. <sighs> Everything looks good in a magazine. Right. And all these AKs you see running on Instagram yeah. for 10, 15 seconds, that's about as far as they're going. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, because it's just, it's just tough. But um, my prosthetist says that my the suction suspension, the socket I have, at the end of the day, is just the best. We're not going to fucking do anything fancy, you know? Right. And actually, there was a guy a long time ago. His name was Thomas Lee. He ran under the uh, Team RWB banner. Uh-huh. He was an above-knee amputee, and he did <clears throat> um, fucking full-on triathlons. Like, is he, he a he single or a double-leg amputee? Single. I yeah. saw a guy on Instagram because I was looking up triathlon stuff, and there was a guy who is a double leg. I believe he's above knee amputee, who just did a fucking he did a triathlon. Okay, was it a sprint or? No, I'd be, I'd be hard pressed to see if he was actually most like so. BKs wear a liner that goes all the way up, and it's black. Yeah, and so a lot of people mistake AK as BK because they yeah. see it go up so high. Right, right, but um. I mean, if, if there is a, I'm going to find this guy. I'm going to find this guy. I followed him, but he doesn't post a lot. So I don't see him anyways. I, I, um, the competition I'm doing at the end of this month, they always have a run for how, how long? Like a couple, I did this competition a couple years ago. It was a mile and I crushed the mile in like 1107, which I think is pretty good. But it's like, I don't want to do that anymore, man. (laughs) I don't want to crutch if I don't have to. What's your one mile crutch? Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. I was like, fuck, I could get that under 10 minutes. I did kind of slow down a bit. You know, what was legit about that. So this was this, this competition I'm doing is called HOA, uh, Heart of America competition. It's in Springfield, Missouri. Um, Jeremy Meyer is a CrossFit OG and he's a first form athlete too. He owns the gym that we uh, do this competition out of. It was called um, fuck. CrossFit Springfield, but now it's called like Proximal Strength, something okay. like that. Super cool, dude. This competition is legit. Like scaled is RX and RX is elite. Um, so it's just, yeah, it was a, the, the event was a max clean and jerk and then a one mile run. So whatever it is, he's going to make us run. And I was like, if, if I can just throw something together... 
and I could run a little bit. Yeah. If I could do half on a leg and then half crutch, all, all right, cool. I'm down with that, right. you know? So actually, you know how I had these two sockets recently that um, were too long? Yeah. It, it, it That only matters if there's a knee. So my running leg is just a pylon. Oh, so it so doesn't it's just, matter. It doesn't bend at all? Yeah. So we just, we, just put, we just put the running leg on the socket that's too long. Um, it fits. But um, so actually, I was I was shoe shopping yesterday. What what running shoes do you have? I use the Under Armour ones. Ugh, I hate Under Armour. I'm fucking just, but it's like a nasty prejudice. Yeah, it makes no sense. I've I just, gotten over. I so I have prejudices like that against gear. Yeah, and I'm just like, and I'll think about it. I'm like, why do I not like this? And then I realize it's some dumb reason that happened. It's okay to be a cunt ago. sometimes, yeah. you know. So I, I bought these because they were. It was a cool Instagram ad. And I, I uh, fucking bought it. That's and right. You've said this before. You got yeah. fucking influenced. Yeah. I got so influenced. Yeah. And they're, and they're pretty good shoes. Yeah. I like them. So I am. Um, do they have like a big sole? Like no. The, so I was looking at the shoes now that have like <clears throat> the soles are like an inch and a half or something like that. Because my thing. Some people have bad heel strikes. And is so, that why that is? Yeah. And well, so, uh, so. Oh, dude. Okay. Perfect. Because I thought it was. um. Like more cushion for absorption. It's well, yeah, because like, you're landing on your fucking heel. Yeah, and instead of trying to change the way you run, you just put yeah. shoes on that accommodate Boom. that. Perfect. Because actually, I took a couple test strides yesterday. Yeah, and like running as an AK, it's super easy to come down flat footed. Okay. And I, but I, I used to have, I used to be a really good runner. And right. I cared about how I ran and things like that. Yep. But it does like what I did back then won't matter. No. If I ever accomplish running again, it'll be totally different, right? <laughs> you know. Um, but I was I was shoe shopping, and I didn't fuck do like I haven't I, I haven't need to needed to go running shoe shopping in fifteen years. So the game has changed. Yes, and there's like these this the ho- ho- Hoka, the Hoka shoes. Yeah. Those are those are real nice. Yep, but they have those big soles. Right, and then um, there's a. Uh, I mean, I, I used to be a New Balance guy. Yep, I like New Balance and a lot. New Balance and Asics. Those yep. were my running shoes yep. back in the day. Those so mine. I was looking at them, but now this brand, um, Brooks, seems to be super fucking popular with runners. Okay, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, dude, Brooks. These Brooks shoes. So that's what I went with. I went with the Brooks Ghost 13. Okay. It was between that and a New Balance shoe, I think. Right. But they're, uh, yeah, it's one of these like big sole fucking shoes it'll be interesting um, to see how it works yeah it yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see how everything works so actually i wonder if you would have a difference in like how your your prosthetic leg lands versus how your human leg lands and if you had like a shoe for heel strikes say and i'm just making up shit a shoe for heel strikes on your prosthetic leg and a totally different kind of shoe for your human leg because of how your foot lands. Yeah. Well, that's the, so like, so this, this running leg I have right now, it's totally just a temporary. Yeah. Let's put something together and hopefully it'll work for a while at HOA. Right. And then we'll take some time. So like, but, um, my prosthetist, I got a new, the, like the, the VA is up and running now, which is fucking nice. It's yeah. four years later. <laughs> and Welcome this, to this, this new guy there is really fucking cool, man. Um, but he said, you know, he, he was a private, he worked in the private sector for a long time. And, um, he said he's never had an above knee amputee successfully tackle running the, and, and I was like, okay, no, it is di- dude. It's difficult. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's not just the technology and things like that. And I asked him and then he walked away and when he came back, I was like, why, what, what's the, what's the hang up? I figured it would be tech. I figured it was technology. Right. And he said, it's just something that's really hard that takes a long time to learn and takes a lot of practice. He's like, even, even a person with two legs. And he said it like this. He's like, you're not a runner. Like if you can't run three miles casually, you're not a runner. Like just being legit, just being honest. I was like, yeah, he's like, so he's like, and for, and he's like, for you, I mean, and so he's like, it's hard for people with two legs to be runners just because for no other reason than, you know, faint hearts. Right. You know, yep. <laughs> like, um, and, and, and for me as an above knee amputee, I have to use roughly 150% more energy to run than you do with your two legs. Right. That's how okay. it is, you know? Yep. Because of the um, way you have to fling it to the just, front. Yeah. It's just, it takes, it takes more energy and that's the... You See, know, I've always thought you have an unfair advantage because you have the blade, springy. which springs yeah. forward. So Those things easier. are springy, but you know, it's just um, 
biomechanics are a real thing, you know, and it's just, yeah. uh, so, and, and so, but when he told me, so I was like, when he told me that I was like, oh, well, like we're good there. Like yeah. that is not my, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the problem. Yeah. It's like my, my biggest problem will be like going to appointments all the time. I'm a horrible advocate for myself or I just got the old infantry infantryman mentality. Right. You know, it's like, I'll just, I, I walk on broken legs all the fucking time. And, uh, but with like, but for something like running, like it really has to, I really need to put more effort into getting to those appointments and fine tuning things. Yep. And we're going to have to put a whole socket together. And then my running leg is just on a pylon and he recommends that I get a blade with a knee, you know? Yeah. And so like, I, and, That'll be but the reason I went pylon is because back when I was trying to run, it was for those tough mutters. Okay. And those are on uneven terrain in the yep. mountains. And if you miss a step, yeah, you're going to fall your ass down. So a pylon, at least, you're not going to, like, you know, because to get those running blades on a knee to lock out, you have to flick it. It's like a mechanical and then it locks, knee, right? And then the pressure will make it unlock. And so if you miss that lock, yeah. there's going to be no resistance in that knee. You're going and you're just first. fucking going down, you know? <laughs> Into the so, mud. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so I was, you know, it's... um. That's, that's a fucking, that's a, that would be huge for me. And it's like, I got to get it. I got to, I don't know how much, uh, you got an AK. I got the dude. That's the dude. I'm going to find that's his a name. That's a double AK. That's a double AK. And he yeah. does, he does, I think he did Iron Man or he did. He, I want to see how far is he running unbroken and not to be a dick. Like, yeah, I yeah. don't know what's possible. It's, I this legit, guy's impressive. Yeah. Um, let me find his name. And so I think that's what's. What's, I think what happens most common with AKs who get running legs is they post their little training video, but you just it, he, he said it's something you have to work on every day for a long time. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. Right. And I was like, well, that's the same fucking thing with everything else. Yep. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it'd be a fun new challenge. Fucking you know? Iron Man, dude. He did, Roderick did, C Sewell. He did a full Iron Man? He, did, he was competing... For the Ironman World Champion in Kona, he did fucking Kona. Really? Yeah. So that that that, and I told I told my that's, that's a I, marathon. That's what I told my prosthetist. I was like, man, the fucking I was like, dude, the fucking awful thing about me is I don't want to just learn how to run. I right. want to fucking do like a triathlon. Yeah. And then I don't want to just do a sprint. I'll I, I'll, I say I'll settle for a half Ironman, but you know if I accomplish that, <laughs> I'll be like, all right. Well, I want the real time one. for a full Ironman, and I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's possible in that realm, in that world. There's not too many people doing it. And Rodrell, Rod, um, yeah, Roderick Jackson, Roderick Sewell Jackson, double AK. Yeah, is double he, AK. Is He's he, on. Is he an American or no? He, I don't know. I think so. Yeah, he's double AK. Does fucking Ironmans. That's legit. I wonder if he uses swimming legs. So I actually have to, I'm going to hit up my friend. He's got a, dude, he's like, this dude's a fucking green beret still. And he's missing his leg above the knee. And he just finished, oh, wow. he just finished like dive school or scuba school or something like that. So he's got a little flipper leg. Really? Yeah. Is that on, so that'd be on a pylon and then. No, it's no. like, I, it's shorter than, no, it's weird. So I have like, I was going to, I'm going to write him today. I'm going to be like, Hey, can I get the details on this leg that you figured out? Yeah. Like just, you know, like it's kind of like the cool thing. And I do that for a lot of people, like some, like in the AK world, you know, like somebody does the work and then you just share that fucking information. Right. You know, hey, I, fi I figured here's, out here's, the cheat here's, code. Here's the tips and tricks, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. That's, you know, and that's what kind of like what I did with like lunges and squatting and yep. things like that. I wasn't the first person to squat with an above knee amputation, but I, um, improved oh, it greatly. I, yeah. And I think more people saw me doing it just because yeah. of how things are and things like that. Yeah. So these are all, these are all, I guess the uh, updates of my life, just lots of straight back into the saddle, man. Just getting Do into it. it. And so I, I think my new running shoe is coming on a uh, Friday. Are you geeking out a little bit? Excited for it? Yeah. I get like that I, with shoes. I hope it will. I hope it were. I don't know. But it was, dude, it was hard for me to buy a brand that I don't yeah. normally wear. I might be throwing 150 bucks <laughs> in the trash right now. No, I don't care about that. It's just, it was, no, what I mean is like, you know me, I like, I'm a brand loyal person. Yeah. So like, I don't do, I don't have a Brooks anything. Right. And so it was weird, but a six, so I looked at a six and they just had too many fucking options, man. And there were too many options in the same price range. 
Oh. And, and I don't know the fucking difference. I don't know what's best for me. I know. Yeah. yeah. So I did my shopping online, you know. Maybe I should go to a running store today or something. Is there like that, one here? Yeah, there's running shoes. They stores. have the ones where they got like the little thing you walk on and it measures the pressure of where the pressure on your foot is. Have you ever yeah. done that? No. Yeah, they like you... I just got a whoop. That'd be in that category, you know, like Man. <laughs> adventure you're about to embark on with data and technology. Do you use a uh, a special sole? Or do you... Are your shoes at all customized? Or? No. So the, I I buy shoes and then if they don't work after like a week or so, I just get new shoes. And, and I'll try a different kind of They're shoe. They're not even broken in yet. No. Like yeah. if... if Because I'll tell... I can tell right away by yeah. how my knee will feel after or if I if my shins hurt a certain way. Yeah. Like I just, I read the pain yeah. like, and cause I know, I know what a good fitting shoe, how mm-hmm. my body should be sore afterwards. Like I yeah. should be sore from the exercise, yeah. not sore from impact. No, I, yeah, I hear you. So I actually, I, I tried to give, you know, the Reebok Nano 10s came out recently. They're, they're Reebok Nano X, but okay. X means 10, you know, um, and they looked really nice. Yeah. They looked like fucking pillows for your feet. And I, and I like, you know, Stacy likes them. My coach likes them. And all these people just think I'm like hung up on Met kit, yeah. Met cons. Cause I love them. I was like, no, I, I've, I started out wearing nanos, but I, um, at the fives, they just became a horrible shoe. Yeah. And then I tried the eights and I put them on and there's something that I didn't like. And then the tens, I try, I seriously tried to like them. And I was like, I don't like this. And I was like, give it a shot, Derek. And I was like, I just don't fucking like this. And I was like, well, no, nope, I don't like it. I just don't like it. You, Throw them away. You, you can tell right away. Yeah, you, know? you can tell yeah. right away. So yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully that's a. Uh, you got a slapper for us today? We can. Yeah. Oh yeah, we could talk about that because I was I was telling you before we started recording. I was like, I want to. I was I was chatting and f- so, uh, another thing I learned last month, like in my training, the, the month the, of discovery. For yeah. You. Well, like so it, uh, um, <laughs> it's interesting. I th- I can't remember what I was listening to. It was either a podcast or a motivational speech or something. I was listening to a lot of motivational speeches last month and like there's like you or Spotify playlists that have some good ones. That's okay. how I found that Inky Johnson guy. Um, but somebody was talking about the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. And I was, and I was, and I was like, interesting. So ba- basically um, this is like a hack. Okay. If, if you're feeling, if you're feeling lazy and you want to fucking skip your workout or if you're feeling scared, and you want to fucking skip your workout or, or cheat on your diet or your training or, or, you know, you're just having a low day. Yeah. The fucking hack is if you can engage your parasympathetic nervous system, you're good to go. And okay. music. So like what it what it what what it is in layman's terms, right, is uh, the fight or flight response. OK. Right. Yeah. But here's a here's a cool thing. Are you you're familiar with fight or flight? Oh, for sure. Right. But are yeah. you from like, do you know there do you, have you um, I think this was in the book on killing okay i think I, like they broke it down a little bit more it, like there's f- there's fight flight fright or freeze okay those are like the, so there's fight like so when you're faced with a challenge yep so like something scares you and that can be that can be a person trying to fight you or it can be your workout that day right you know right <laughs> so there's fight there's like you know, you, if you can engage that parasympathetic nervous system, you're going to, you're like, so here's music. So, um, I'll, I'll tell the slapper there's, if there's songs that just hype you the fuck up, right. Play that fucking song and then let yourself get into those feelings of, you know, that's, it's just a temporary fix, but all you need is a fucking hour. Yep. Uh, and you just need to feel good for an hour and then you can go right back to uh lazy, but you know, sloth. like, you know, the, you know, <laughs> just get that workout in, you know, but so there's the fight response and you can cheat that with music or thoughts or remembering why you're doing something, but then there's, there's flight and that's just quitting. Yep. You know? Um, and that's, that's, that's probably more, that's the easy route. Flight is the easy route. Yep. Like making excuses, saying you'll do better tomorrow, giving yourself a break, la di da. Yeah. And the, but then there's fright, and that just means puffing up your chest, and that means like boasting, but not actually doing the work. Okay. You know, so it's like a like a bear will stand tall. Like he doesn't want to fight. Right. But it's he's trying to scare. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, you're just you're just pretending. Right. You're just fucking pretending. And then there's freeze. And then there's just, that's just like paralysis, which is an interesting one because I think a lot of people 
freeze mm -hmm. in fitness when they're when they so like if they're overwhelmed so they got 100 pounds to lose and the overwhelming amount of information on the internet causes fucking the freeze response yes i don't know what to fucking do and i i'm so fucking lost yep. that i'm I, that i just i'm overwhelmed I, i'm I, i'm nothing right i'm going back to what i know fucking cornflakes and you know like yeah just you know like uh but it's, it's um those are those are the responses. It's funny. So like that's the parasympathetic nervous system. So last dude, I was list the, the so this is here's the slapper. And this is I it, it's funny how music influences us. Mm -hmm. I would um I would almost categorize like my emoness as a flight response. Like it makes me feel good to retreat a little bit and you can make arguments like oh maybe that's you know but it's but i that's what i feel you know it's like okay. i let myself retreat be sad retreat. i let myself yeah so i was listening to emo music yesterday and i was just like man i just this isn't hitting the spot right now like i i want something that really stimulates my aggression my right. we'll call it motivation my desire you know and um dude fucking Rocky, <laughs> bro, you bro. can't listen to this song and not get fucking, hold on. And then about halfway through it hits. Uh -huh. So that, that song is called going the distance. Okay. And it's from the Rocky movie. Right. And it's just, it's been, um, it, it, it gets me. It makes me remember my why. It makes me remember, and I and I don't want to like. I feel weird when I talk about my why. Because right. So many people talk about it. They well, it's don't, the catcher. It, it's the buzzword. Right. Yeah. Thing. But it's and like, you hate buzzwords. Yeah. But it's I. That's what it is. Or yep. like it's like why I care. You know, because it's it's easy to forget. We have so many fucking distractions and things Tons. like that. And but if you can, but that's that's a trick I learned, man. Yeah. It's like if you're having a down day. And just in f force your brain to, or like put put things in thoughts or music or you know pre workout things like that. Engage that parasympathetic nervous system. Find that fight response, and it'll carry you for a while. And then like when you and then so it's like if you if you skip your workout, you're gonna you, you hate yourself when you when you know. When there's something you want to do and yep. you don't do it, you fucking hate yourself for it. Yes. All right. So I'm not saying like, or like, yeah, I, I believe everybody should work out pretty regularly, but it's not like do or die for you. Like it is for me or something like that. Right. You know, but like, yeah, like I would argue most people want to exercise, be healthy and look good, you know? And if, and if, and if they're supposed to go to the gym at six o'clock in the morning and they choose that flight response for whatever reason, so many excuses, so many things, it's it, it's gonna haunt them yeah it, and whether they know it or not and they might and they might you know they might think that their you know wife is the problem that day but the problem is they skip the gym right <laughs> you know <laughs> like, it wasn't her fault yeah and so but it's that it's that uh it's such a it's such a cool I f like these are things i'm learning along the way i'm like fuck man and we say this all the time you got to be more than human you have to learn how to like hack yep. your life like it's it's not your fault it's not our fault for what our brains do with uh, out, that's outside of our control. Yeah. But it is our fault how we respond. Totally. And it's so what you can so control. There's, you can just trick your fucking brain, man. And so this song, it just does that for me right yeah. now. And um and there's a there's I think my all time song, um, World So Cold by Mudvayne. No clue that, what song that fuck, is. Fuck, dude, you've you've heard this song. I'm sure I have. And My memory is not a, so it's good. It's a fucking heater, man. Or I've just been listening to it. So actually, it's a, it's this song. Oh, oh, and we're gonna listen to that song later. I'm sure we are. So when I when I <laughs> so what did, remember last month when I was like, we made that video. It's like, what's my why? Yeah. It's like, oh, I've been the same. I've had the same why this whole time. Yep just trying to prove that I can or like when I started working out I wanted to be better I didn't I and I and I really didn't think much of myself and I didn't and I'd only been a quitter at that point I quit sports I right. quit on life yep so I knew myself as a quitter 
And so it's always been this battle for me between choosing to win or choosing to quit, you know? And um, so like the week before the competition or two weeks, all I listened to was music that I listened to when I was like 17, 18 years old. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> dude. But it fucking, it fired up that, I, it, I fired up, you know, I can do things without understanding what's going on. Right. But now that I understand what was happening there, like yeah. just firing up that parasympathetic nervous system, it was, it was um, manipulating my fight response. That's really what, it, what was going on. And yeah. that's how I, I carried, and I, and that's what, um, when I, when I said earlier today in the show, when I was like, I don't want to go be emo. I want, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I love that feeling. I, and that's what it is. I love that fight response. And it doesn't mean I'm angry or aggressive or something like that. This is a personal thing. Right. You know, I just, I, I want to listen. I don't want to listen to things that make me sad. I don't want to be, I, you know, I, sometimes I do in the past. Like I really enjoyed that, but like, I want to listen to things that give me the tingles down mm -hmm. my spine. Like that's what I'm fucking chasing after in life. You know, like it feels a lot better than the sadness. Fucking tingles. Well, sadness feels cool sometimes too, but like, yeah, but you're right. You know, in a bad, it, it's, it's not good. No, like I want, I want to, I don't want to just toss this shit away. Already. Right. Like I just learned this about myself and I want to enjoy it and I want to take it further. And it's not, it's like, it's like, I don't, I just don't want to, I've done well and I know I, 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 and I proved to myself I'm good, but it's always like, how good can I be? How, how, like, like new challenges. I want to, I don't, I don't want to stop right now. So it's like, you know, I just want to stay focused. I don't want that parasympathetic nervous system. I just want to keep jerking that thing off. I want mm -hmm. it to come all over my brain, <laughs> just fucking ejaculate all over my neocortex or whatever the fuck you got inside there, you know. But it's a cool hack, and I and I'm and I, and I've and I've always known that that music influences you, you right? Know? And so actually, I didn't let myself listen to emo emo music in August. I didn't want my brain to go there, right? I wanted to stay focused and aggressive right you know and i so i was doing these things without really knowing the, that you were hacking the, yourself the what yeah yeah it's just, it's just i was just hacking myself off yep <laughs> you gotta you it's gotta just, hack yourself sometimes. off dude that's fucking funny just gotta hack yourself <laughs> off gotta sometimes yourself off. you gotta cheat your brain you gotta hack yourself off a little bit <laughs> so that's you know so that's 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 uh that's something i learned something i'll use now and i'm sharing it here on the podcast it's like if you're having a down day if you're if you're really like if you're really 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 thinking about skipping that run or skipping that workout have a go-to song that like really, or, or like something, a song or a thought could be a picture. Yeah. Just like really, really, truly like take a moment and remember why you set out on this in the first place. Yeah. And then if you can fire that up inside, it's going to, it just, you just get those tinglys. When you think about why you're doing something, why you care, if you can remember that, you get the tingles. Yeah. And then you get that fight response. You're like, let's fucking go. Let's do it. Let's go. And that's just fucking hacking yourself off. So that's my that's my tip for the day. It's something I learned. Maybe I should um yeah. And I'd like to think about this more and look into it and kind of figure it out a little bit because it's cool. It's super cool. Really fucking cool. It's just like I wish I would have known this fifteen years ago, but I had a lot of well, you did. You just didn't know yeah. you were doing right. it. Yeah. You just didn't yeah. know what you were and doing. I, and and like so just like you can fucking engage your fight response. Yeah. You can listen to things or think about things that engage your flight response. You like it, it like cause one, you're gonna flood chemicals into your body. That's yeah. what a brain does. It puts the chemicals in your brain and your body, your muscles will either like fucking tense up or they'll relax because you're fucking sad. Yeah. Or like the f the fright response or the freeze response. Like what you do, what you think about your environment, you know, like you, you just, you can just as easily accidentally encourage your flight response. Just, yeah. Just as, you know, it's maybe it's actually, it takes a, I think like for me, my flight response is my natural response. And so that's, you know, I say like I was yeah. proving my, trying to prove to myself that I can you're choose a, the fight. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. You're in a constant state of fighting that off. If, if, yeah. if you feel like that's your natural state, then you're in a constant state of like. Yeah. But that's exactly what I'm doing. Right. That's what, like what I just want. Cause like, I want to be that kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so it takes, 
it takes conscious effort. Yep. Conscious effort. Because my my go to my default Your default isn't yeah. isn't uh isn't a good one. So yeah, that's that's yeah that's our, my tips for today. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said pictures too, because I think pictures pictures it's are a big part invoke, of that too. It, it's a like for well for me, it's like memories, right? Me, you know, memories motivate me or my, memories inspire me. Yeah, I've you started know? I've started printing out a lot of pictures of memories because my memory sucks. Like I forget yeah. a lot of shit that I did. I'll right. hear stories and I'll be like, dude, that's funny. Who said that? Yeah. And my wife will be like, you fucking said that. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm funny. Damn, I'm a lot smarter yeah. than I thought. Oh. Dude, sometimes I, I'll see a quote. Yeah. <laughs> with my picture from right. like five years ago. I was yeah. Like, and I always I used to like it's easy for me to shit on past versions of myself. And right. I'm like, that's really fucking good. Like, that's I need good. to apply that to my day i need to listen I need, to myself I need to do that today <laughs> fuck you know yeah yeah but i'm sorry what were you what were you saying no i was just like, saying pictures like i've been yeah. i've been printing out a lot of pictures and like putting them up or framing them or, or taking stuff that like it's cool to post stuff on instagram that you want to remember mm -hmm. but then unless you're on instagram looking at those pictures you don't see them i've yeah. been making a conscious effort to, to print those out and put them on the walls really? because they're ones that motivate me to to push towards certain goals I have. Yeah. And so we've, we've brought like a lot of our farming pictures that we have from back mm -hmm. when we were on the farm in Washington, we've, we've printed those out and put them up on the walls so the kids could see them. But also because those you just remember your, just focus, remember. Right? Yeah. Remember I had so much doing. focus yeah. when I was doing that. And then you get uh, distracted by all the things here and you just yep. sort of like try to remember why you give a shit. Yeah. Right. You just, you're just over, you're just at home. Hacking yourself off. Hacking off. Kids. Yep. <laughs> 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 Look at these pictures, kids. Yeah. Go away. Daddy's hacking off. Daddy's hacking. Yeah. Cool, man. I like that. I'm going to think about that more. And, and yeah. maybe maybe somewhere I'll try to um, elaborate on it a little bit. Yeah. So it's more clear. It's sort of like. Uh, think know, on it. Rent. Yeah. Cool. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for us today. Cool. Um, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed. I think uh, I think next week we're gonna do some questions. Yeah. Hey, we have an email that is uh, savageme at derekwida dot com. So if you have questions that you want to hear, um, we've got a few that we still haven't gotten to, but we can always use some more. So send us an email, savageme at derekwida dot com, and we'll uh, we'll see what you got. Cool. Anyways, as always, love you guys. Cheers. <laughs>